In just 43 days, this place is going to be filled with families from our city. We have been given a great opportunity to reach our city this Easter on April 11th. I would like to invite you to join us as we love on the city of Winston-Salem during Easter extravaganza. God has called us to the city to do good, so please take out your phones and your tablets and go to wsfirst.com forward slash Easter and register to volunteer at Easter extravaganza. This will be an opportunity to do good and to love on Winston-Salem, and you're not going to want to miss out on that. Oh, and did I forget to mention, you will get a free t-shirt for volunteering. And who doesn't like a free t-shirt? I cannot wait to serve alongside every single one of you on April 11th at our Easter extravaganza. Let's go and love on our city. Thank you. Well, that's your kids pastor right there, Pastor Michael and uh, Alyssa are going to be leading us into the city. We've got to have your help. If we all show up and there's 20 of us standing around and 10,000 kids out there, it's going to be a rough day. So that you need to sign up. Go right now. You're going to get bored anyway in the next couple minutes as I'm talking. So go ahead, sign up, and we'll know if you sign up. If you say, Pastor, my, I don't have a smartphone. My phone's not that smart. You can find somebody in the foyer walking around with an iPad, and they'll get you signed up so that we know. And the way Michael has laid it out, it's, these are 90-minute windows to serve. So you can just serve 90 minutes, and then if you have kids or family that you want to attend uh, the Easter uh, event uh, egg hunt with, there'll be two sessions, so you just work one session and, and enjoy the next. Also, corporate sponsors are available. We have four corporate sponsor slots. One of them, I think, may be taken. Uh, for $2,500, your business will be put upon all the marketing. It'll look uh, uh, very good for you. You can hand out stuff. You can have a table there, and uh, uh, Michael and the team have already laid all that out. So if you're interested in being a corporate sponsor, uh, $2,500 will get you into that. You can do more, of course. You cannot do less and be a corporate sponsor, so uh, keep that in mind. Ushers, uh, why don't you go ahead and come, and while you're coming next Sunday, a dear personal friend of mine, someone that serves with me at Oral Roberts University, she's my uh, vice chair uh, she will be here, Holly Moore, and she will uh, share in the afternoon <clears throat> uh, lunch. So here's how we're going to do it. In less than an hour, we'll have you in and out of here. So for 10 bucks, you can have lunch. She is a corporate leadership specialist, all right? More than 30 years in corporate leadership. Um, you can uh, Google her. She is all over the place uh, in mentoring and uh, working in um, with mainstream schools and um, businesses, corporations. She does a lot of training for corporate, now does a lot of private uh, consulting. So uh, anyway, I don't want you to miss that opportunity. And beyond that, honestly, it's a great way for us to get together. So what will happen right after the service next Sunday, these chairs will be uh, pushed out of the way, tables will be rolled in, and we're uh, and the boxes of food set there. You'll just sit down and uh, you'll eat while Holly is talking and, and just sharing some tips on leadership and then we're going to have you out probably 30 to 40 minutes. It's just going to be, uh, it's the first, it's a vision that I've had for a long time. I can see it happening on our new campus a lot. Uh, and we want to sample it here. So I need you to sign up. or Otherwise, there won't be a box of food. You, we need to know you're coming. So sign up. It's just 10 bucks. And uh, child care is available. You can check all that out online. Thank you for your faithfulness and your giving <coughs> and uh, sharing with us when you are uh, when you are dialed in, when you are, when you are focused, it just means the world to us and helps us in, in our budget. We have done our best to uh, be uh, good stewards of what God has given us, and we are moving into the city this Thursday. I'll be sharing with the elders. Uh, we have four different properties that have surfaced that we're going to begin to pray into and look. I don't expect an announcement soon at all. But the elders are going to move into that conversation of seeking the Lord in prayer. And so we're very excited about uh, the future and what God has for us. Can you say amen? amen? Look to your neighbor and say five. We've had five different locations. And we're getting ready to relocate again. And uh, so with God's help, uh, his smile over us, it's going to go very, very well. So uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for your giving. Uh, we do give to missions. We, uh, we will... Uh, hopefully be giving some missions updates soon, but we give to missions every month whether you help us 
do that or not. We support missionaries around the world. We have lots of friends and lots of stories have been emailed in lately of what God is doing around the world. Now, many of you are uh, freaked out about the coronavirus. Winston-Salem, you don't even have to say corona. What you have to say around here is snow. And Harris Teeter, the line's out the door or, or food line or any of the other store. It's just Publix. It's just bad, right? Just say snow and then stuff happens. But you can imagine be, being a missionary with kids and family around the world and other parts of the world where, where it is a little more complicated as it relates to stuff. So I want you to keep our family of missionaries in prayer as we think about them and all that they're doing to sacrifice to advance God's kingdom uh, in other geographical locations. So uh, you ready to pray? Let's pray over this offering. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness to us, and we express it back to you. We say thank you for what you are doing and what you have done in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. As the ushers are, um, as the ushers are making their way, <clears throat> I'm going to ask Darla to bring the uh, jets up with us. If you're a guest today, our executive pastors, Clinton Claire Jet, uh, Jet announced last week um, or a couple of weeks ago that they're going to be relocating, taking, uh, again, a senior pastorate. They were senior pastors for 12 years when they came here from Georgia. And at that time, we knew that this, uh, a moment like this would come and would happen, and, and uh, we're, we're at that place. But they've been elected uh, to a church in Louisiana called Life Fellowship. And, um, and so today we have an unusual service planned and, and want to just share, uh, share with you and uh, thank God honestly thank God for uh, the blessing of this couple uh, to us, to our lives personally. And, um, you know, we had no idea when you came what, what we would end up having to walk through. And we're so grateful that you were right by our side, not just at the church, but as friends uh, in the loss of our daughter, Whitney. And I was thinking about um, Whitney uh, yesterday. I think about, of course, every day, hours uh, uh, sometimes uh, throughout the day. But I was thinking about how much she loved uh, the Jets and um, Morgan and, and Jordan, your son, of course, but she loved you guys and uh, Brayden and Heather do too. And we just, um, you are a part of us and we're deep, you're deeply connected to us. So um, anyway, when I think of you uh, and you're a beautiful couple and whenever people talk about you, you rarely hear somebody say, oh, Clint or Claire, it's always Clint and Claire. Anybody, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I invented a new word for them. It's called coupleness. So they have been coupleness to us at Winston-Salem First. They have showed us how to love and labor together, and, and we just are so grateful. You know, I would say there are people that come in and that can do tasks. Anybody can do a task if you give them the task. But it takes, it takes a special group of, uh, 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 it takes a special leader and leaders to be able to walk into a room and sense this, this is what they need, they need this. And that's what you guys have done here in our community. And so uh, we, are, we are grateful Life Fellowship Church will be a better church uh, because you're there. They need you at this time in their history, a hundred year old church and uh, very much in their relocation mode. So uh, jumping out of the frying pan into the fire kind of, mm -hmm. uh, so you're going to be relocating that church. But uh, um, I thought I would mention a, a few wins, but you want to mention a, a few of the, the leadership wins that Claire had. Uh, I think uh, most of you know that uh, Claire kind of runs that, that foyer out there. And uh, she honestly came in and created a whole new culture there. And uh, one of welcoming and love. And uh, you've experienced that, that shift. And she's got a whole team of people that uh, she... I want to say uh, somehow she managed to rub her love all over them, and now they share it with everybody else too, that joy and love that she has. So we're so grateful for that, and uh, that was a huge she shift for us. She even got some people to wear T-shirts. She did. She did, and uh, that was another cultural change. And we're, we're not super compliant often around here, but somehow with the love and the smile of Claire. We did, yeah, and they just gave into whatever that she asked for because <laughs> she get, she did it with a smile and with love in her heart, and uh, and we're grateful for that and uh, the great team that has been built even around that. We're going to miss uh, Clint, and uh, there are a number of wins that you didn't see, but I know the men of the church are are really, really, really going to miss Clint. He is became known around here pretty quickly as a man of action just to get things done, could build anything and uh, just make things happen. 
But the one, one big win I wanted to call out as an example today, uh, there were so many nuances or little tweaks, and Clint didn't seek to get any credit for it. But um, early on, he came to me and, then, and, and shared and said, you know, I think we need to do baptisms uh, out uh, in the audience rather than up in the North 40 up there behind the curtains. Why don't we, why don't we bring it out on the stage? And I was like, That's, it's just not going to work. <laughs> it, it just, it's, it's just not going to work. I'm going to tell you. And he's like, you know, I really think you ought to consider this. And I said, okay, we're going to try it one time. And when it doesn't work, I'm giving you all the credit. <laughs> and not only, not only did it work, but in the, in the year 2017, we baptized 200 people to the glory of God right over here on this mm-hmm. stage. And I, I know it's because they connected that. So, yeah. uh, Clint, uh, thank you for that. We love you. You guys are amazing. We've got some gifts. So that's my wife moving me along because I get up here talking. Uh, this is... <laughs> This is... Me and Claire know what we do in secret. Okay. Just kind of like, you know. Yeah. We, we know. Clint and I are aware more than y'all realize, just so we're clear. This is an envelope full of airline vouchers for Claire to fly her kids down whenever she wants to see them in Louisiana. So there you go. This is a beautiful bouquet for the church, just from the church to love on you guys. And uh, <coughs> we have... <coughs> We have a man gift for Clint. But here it, we, we here spend, it is. No, no. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, I want to show him okay, the people. Uh, it's Clint. No, <laughs> this is not Clint. It's this, not Clint. No, this is actually is Claire. is manly, and you hold it, and it grunts. You know, it's yeah, a no. no. We spent several thousand dollars on Clint's <laughs> gift, uh, sportsman's <laughs> gift, and you can uh, buy whatever you want or whatever. But we just wanted to express our love, and then that is a, a beautiful necklace with, uh, with um, Morgan and Jordan Name on the on chain uh, so that you would always uh, have them close to your heart. So uh, we love you. Let's take a look at this little surprise right here on the screen. Everybody watch. Clint Claire, the main thing that comes to mind when I think about y'all is that you make people feel known and seen and valued. And I just thank you so much for that. The Brewers love the Jets because they are just so energetic and they are truly sent from God. Um, They have done such a marvelous job here at Winston-Salem First. Um, They exude all the attributes of what God wants in a family, in leaders, in pastors. And, you know, we want to wish them well in their next assignment that God has for them and God's blessing and speed and we're going to see them again because, you know, Clint, you know I like your fried turkeys and I'm going to get some more soon. What I like about Clint and Claire is both of them are very authentic. Claire is unique because um, she's super bubbly and when I first met her, I did not think that that was who she really was. But I honestly think she wakes up like that every day. And I absolutely love that about her personality. What I love about Clint is he walks around and he says these jokes and i think that he's the only one that gets them however we love him and i do get them and if i don't get them claire definitely gets them clinton and claire we hate that you guys are leaving um as probably so many people have said uh, but we are wishing you the best michelle would be here if she could next to me um, but she could not Uh, but together we just want to say thank you for pouring into our church and our community over these years Uh, Clint, especially the men of our church, thank you so much, and Claire, the women. uh, Michelle and I and our whole community has benefited um, from the love that you guys have shown uh, to us, and we are wishing you the best um, uh, moving forward. We love you guys. They were so approachable. They're very friendly, and they make you feel like uh, you're special. And uh, and I am so thankful that... uh, that I was able to really conversate with them. Claire and Clint, you are beacons of love. You're culture changers. You are an inspiration. I know that anywhere you go, you're going to change culture into one of love. You have here and you have here. I appreciate all of my time that I've been able to spend with you 
and I'm going to miss you dearly. Would you like to express your thanks and love to this couple uh, and tell them how much you appreciate them? thinking about that song that Anthony sang, <laughs> we're not enough unless you come. And that's us. I didn't expect any of this. I mean, we didn't do anything. We just love you. And thank you <laughs> for letting us love you. And thank you for serving and wearing t-shirts. <laughs> And more t-shirts are coming if you don't have one. <laughs> it's your turn. You I'm going to cry again. <laughs> wow. Just one thought. If the prerequisite for frying turkeys to enter the Purdy Gates, I'm in. <laughs> I think I may have a right hand of the Jesus. Maybe for us, though, it's getting to eat them. And yeah. then we're all in. Yeah. Hey, thank you so very much for receiving us, our entire family, from the very beginning. You guys uh, just uh, was so uh, open to serving the Lord together. And uh, we're so grateful for all of the relationships and the friendships that we have built over the past few years and uh, we will always hold a special place in our heart for Winston-Salem First. And uh, we know that uh, through social media, naturally, we'll continue to stay in contact with many of you. But uh, we just want to express our appreciation to you as a community of believers for all that we've been able to do together over these last several years. And as a sidebar... Um, Thank you for your prayers. Uh, our house went on the market Thursday and we went into contract yesterday. So three days. So that's much better than three years. So there's something to that. Three years, three days. But anyway, thank you for your prayer and support for us as a family over the years. And, and let me say, I'd be remiss if I, I did not share this with you because I want to encourage you uh, Claire and I, over the last 25 years, have been privileged to serve alongside uh, great men and women of God in various states, in various church settings. And uh, I just want to remind you what a treasure you have in Dr. Mike and Darla Rakes. And I don't, I don't share that uh, because I was coerced or coached or prodded or pro prompted to do that. That comes from uh, deep sincerity. So I want to admonish you as, as we leave today. Uh, for 13 years, uh, Pastor Mike and Darla, through difficulty, through challenges, and here recently through loss, uh, they've been loyal to God and they've been loyal to this church body. And as ministers, Claire and I, uh, in serving various congregations over the years, we've always held loyalty to a high standard and a, pr a primary uh, characteristic. So as they've been loyal to you, I admonish you to continue to be loyal to them because they carry the heartbeat of the Spirit. So wherever they go, I encourage you to follow and be their best cheerleaders because God does have something grand and spectacular for this church and this community. We love you, Winston-Salem First. Thank you for everything. We pray God's blessings upon you. Amen.
Amen. You know, I feel conflicted. You ever, you know, the, the confliction that you have sometimes? Reminds me of the pastor that got up. He was just filling, filling all the juices on one sermon. And he's like, I, I just think, I just think we want to show God we're all in. We're just going to take all the beer we have. We're just going to pour it in the river. He got excited. He said, you know what? We're going to take all the whiskey and rum we have. We're going to just take all our whiskey and rum. We're going to go down. We're going to go pour it in the river. He said, you know what? We're going to take all the, all the Holy Communion. We're going to take all the wine. We're just going to pour it in the river. And, and uh, he finished his sermon, went and sat down, and the song leader got up and said, now, let's all sing, shall we gather at the river? <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know whether we, whether we need to go have a good long drink and, and, and cry. Uh, you know, we're going to miss you. Uh, we're going we're gonna to miss you. So we had three people just walked out the head to the river. <laughs> Got to love our church. We're just a, a crazy church. Good to see you. Glad that you're here. I want to just share uh, a brief message with you, but one I can honestly say is from the Holy Spirit. I was thinking through our relationship uh, with this couple. It's been um, a long time now, long before we decided to work together. Um, you know, we were uh, in each other's lives and and uh, knew each other and had a friendship. and And uh, we're going to miss miss them uh, dearly. I was thinking about the unity. How is it that we have unity? We don't we don't uh, um, take that lightly and. Uh, Psalm 139 says that, um, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb, and I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, and what I would say to you is, you have a unity with God. Whether you are following Jesus Christ today, whether you've accepted him as, as your personal savior and bowed your knee to him and confess your sins to him or not, God is still at the core of who you are. I want you to hear this. God is your being, and what you are, you are in God. And you uh, uh, awaken to that self, that, that real you, that authentic you. But you are not God's being. God does exist outside of you. God doesn't need you to exist. He already exists. But it is highly important that we understand that God is at the core of all of us. And so whether, uh, whether we come from disparate parts theologically, whether we agree on, on this thing or that thing, God is at the core of who we are. God is what we call our great center. And so rather than think, well, that, that sounds like uh, universalism or that sounds like, no, I'm, what I'm trying to do is connect to say, I don't, I don't know who you are, but God knows who you are. And, and God is compelling you to awaken to who he is inside of you already. Colossians 3 says it this way. <clears throat> Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. Where Christ sits in the place of honor. Notice the word place there. Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. And think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. For you died to this life, and your life is, your real life is hidden with Christ in God. In other words, you won't know who you really are until you, maybe the best word to use would be surrender who you think you are into God. And verse 4 says, and when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. I'll say it again this way, that being in unity with God is not something earned or even attained, but you awaken to it. You awaken to the sacrifice of God's great love for us and Jesus reaching to us and that uh, suffering on the cross. And it's in that awakening that you find salvation. And so it is, we are, we are unified with one another because we are unified in God together. And so in God together, we are, as, as we say, brothers and sisters in the faith, not in a religion, but we are made brothers and sisters, uh, joint heirs with Christ, if you will. Jesus said it this way, John 14, 20, when I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father 
and you are in me, and I am in you. Again, there's this integration that I'm wanting to show. The, the, the example I'm using today is that Clinton Clare, even all those years ago, we knew there was this connection, but it was that we were on a journey, a journey as people of faith. They had uh, walked through many dark trials, many difficulties in their family, and then, uh, then we would as well now. But in that, there is a unity that you find. John 15, 5 says, yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. And those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. I uh, uh, found myself, uh, we, we have the downtown office because Clint got out in front of that and saw how all of the dominoes were lining up and was able to uh, line up. We, we now are in the same building as the Chamber of Commerce in Winston-Salem. Our, we have uh, 24 months left on our lease and it's just been uh, an, an amazing uh, part of that. And that, that unity of, of pulling us into the city is, is what God is uh, kind of uh, calling us to and we're discovering that more and more. And so as I was thinking through the whole unity thing and uh, processing that and I found so many more verses even than this, this image came into my mind of hub and spoke. And I'll just put, have them put up this uh, picture I want you to focus on it for a moment because I want you to notice the middle of this old wagon wheel, just right in the middle of that. That's what I'm suggesting to you as God. God, God is everywhere, but God is, is, is also in, 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 the, in the middle of that, that, that place where God is, that he is in the middle. And those spokes that run toward the middle, we each get there in different ways. Some uh, come through there because they have a hunger to know God. God, I, I want to know you for who you are. And they'll travel down the spoke of hunger. Others uh, travel a road of brokenness and difficulty uh, and, um, you know, even uh, all kinds of pain um, from culture or whatever. And that brokenness leads you, as you follow that path, leads you to uh, the Lord. And others find suffering as a spoke, that they travel the spoke of suffering and grief and, and uh, great difficulty. Community is another spoke, and there, there are many spokes that go around the wheel, but I chose not to try and make a teaching so much today out of it as just to get a picture in your mind as to why we are unified together and how we are even unified with the folks in this city. You see, today isn't just a message about uh, Claire and Clint uh, in transition. All of us are in transition. Our entire church, even as an organization, we are also relocating. Galatians 3, 27 and 28, I'll just summarize it. It basically says, we will lose all of our differences and we become one in Jesus. That there, we lose our labels and become one in him. And then we see in the book of Acts chapter 1, and it jumped out at me just a few days ago thinking about this service, that the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus says, uh, I want you to wait in this place. I want you to tear. I don't want you to leave. Go to the upper room and then wait until you've been baptized uh, with the Holy Spirit. So I want you to think about it in a moment. And I mentioned baptism, uh, that, that Clint had the idea that we needed to bring the baptisms closer to the audience so that we could participate in the joy and the life-giving excitement that people have when they're laying down their past and saying, I'm moving forward in Jesus but when you were baptized in water, you have to be in that place. You, you have to be in that special place. I was baptized in a, in a small um, river. Uh, and um, I, I, remember, I remember it being cold. I remember it being meaningful because my dad baptized me. And I remember thinking, I will never forget this moment. I remember having that thought. But I can remember the place like I have a photo of it. I can remember the place. I remember it. It's clear in my mind. Places become important. And this place has uh, played a, a role for, for a 70-year-old church. We've had five different places that we called home. Claire and Clint are going to a church that's 100 years old. Like, that's old. So you're 100. And, and they're literally their assignment going in there. Their, their services are full and they've got to relocate. They've got to find property and build and construct. And this is, this is the right couple to lead them in that process. But my point is, I think all of us are in relocation mode. 
that we are, we are in the process of relocating. And when Jesus tells them, look, I don't want you to relocate. I want you to wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Wait in this place. And they did wait in that place. Then the Holy Spirit came and baptized them. And Jesus said, once you've received power, here's what I want you to do. Leave that place and go to Jerusalem. Then leave uh, Jerusalem spread out into the broader community of Judea. And then Samaria, which shows us that multicultural piece of those outside uh, the Jewish tradition. And then Jesus says to the ends of the earth. It's really amazing, isn't it? How God brings us together in one place with special people and we make what? Memories together. We have um, occasions that we remember. Why would any of you relocate? Why would you change? Why would this couple change? Why would we as a church Follow the advice of the task force and the board from five years ago and relocate. There are three things you need to know. If you're contemplating a new job, if you you are thinking about uh, moving to another community or whatever it might be, there are three things that I noticed. And you could see it in Claire and Clint's life and you can watch it in the life of our church. Number one, God has initiated a, a leading to a different place. And when God starts that on you, it'll feel odd. It it feels unusually strange when he's leading you. And there are all kinds of metaphors you can use. Sometimes he unfeathers the nest this way or that way. But at the end of the day, it's God that's initiating this, this leading. You do have to be patient. You do have to wait. Sometimes he's initiating that, but it takes years for it to come about. Number two, God inspires a commitment to a new place. Very soon, in just a matter of weeks or so, Claire and Clint won't be associated with Winston-Salem first in people's minds. It'll be Life Fellowship Church. That that God gives them a a new assignment, a new place for them to be who they are and impact change there. And God will inspire commitment from their hearts to that congregation. And so it is with us. We are leaving this place after all the decades of being here, after the literally blood, sweat, and tears poured into this facility and then all the other campuses that we had before, the point is that God is going to show us our new place. We don't know what our new place is right now, but we will. And when we find that new place and the leadership says, this is that new place, then the Lord will inspire a commitment to that place. And third, it's in the new place that you look for a strong sense of the Lord's presence. Like Abraham setting out on a journey You don't get all the fruitfulness until you've laid down the sacrifice. And so it is that passion for the Lord and that presence of the Lord that comes, that comes in that new place. It is a fresh passion for an area, a fresh passion for a neighborhood, a fresh fresh passion for those you care about. You know, um, I'm grateful to Claire and Clint for modeling for us as they have over the years of what it means to just obey the heart of the Lord and follow and pursue his voice. And we've got to do the very same thing. And so as uncomfortable as it is for you to say, man, we like, we like this old place. Yes, but the Lord has compelled us to, to move on. And so we move on committed to say, Lord, we want to find that, find that place. The Bible says And Paul actually is quoting a philosopher who says, in him we live and move and have our being. And that's, I want you to be unified with God and I want you to find your place. In the end, the win that Claire and Clint brought to this congregation is they helped so many of you find your place in this church. You found your place. And that's like a spike the football, LSU moment. He's a big LSU fan. It's a, a spike the football moment. And so it will be for all of us as we help others in our city find that. Well, here's how we're going to end today. I'm going to ask my uh, administrative assistant and Pastor Holly Potter, who oversees uh, all of our um, congregational care, if they would escort Claire and Clint out. Our team talked about it. We were going to serve everybody fried turkey. <laughs> Notice I said we were going to. Because we got to talking about it and said, you know what? We don't want to be distracted by the food. 
What did Claire and Clint bring to us but a heart of love? They gave us hugs and encouragement. Claire would ask about your kitty cat. Some of you didn't know I knew about that. You would bring all your needs to Claire. The Bible says take them to the Lord. But apparently you took them to Claire and Clint. But they're going to go. We've created, the team who created a receiving line out there. We're just going to create space. I'm cutting the service off right now. You have no excuses. You're going to go out there and you're going to hug necks and love one another. And we'd love for you just to stay in here and talk with one another. Be a community of faith. I love you. I want you to find your place. What does God have for you? And most importantly, I want you to understand and, and allow that awareness to pop up that you are unified with God. What I have learned over these years of following Jesus since I was a little boy is the only thing required of you is to surrender. Lord, I'm yours. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. And thank you for these choice servants that grace these grounds. In Jesus' name. And the whole church said, amen. amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. We'll be here. Bye-bye.